All right, guys, so in this video, we're in the liver. Um, we're gonna kind of tell, make sure you tell the story of how uh, stuff gets from unconjugated to conjugated. Uh, I think the questions are a little bit harder, so see if you can try to do those before I explain them, and um, hope, the, hope the video is helpful. All right, guys, so the question reads, a 16-year-old boy who immigrated to America is brought to the pediatrician by his mother because she noticed a recent color change in his eyes. There is no previous history of this occurrence. Otherwise, the boy has no complaints. The pediatrician obtains lab values which demonstrate the following. It has total bilirubin at 5, direct bilirubin, indirect bilirubin, uh, AST, ALT, uh, and of course the GGT. Now it says, a liver biopsy reveals accumulation of dark coarsely granular melanin-like pigment in the central, uh, central lobular hepatocytes. Which of the following is the most likely explanation of the patient's symptoms? And it gives these uh, kind of mechanisms here. So to do a question like this, and you know, anytime they're talking about this bilirubin stuff, you gotta be, you gotta understand how it works. Um, as thing as the uh, bilirubin comes to the liver, okay. So basically, the bilirubin it comes to the liver, and it's going to come in the unconjugated um, form, okay, unconjugated bilirubin. From this point forward, I'll just say UCB, un unconjugated uh, bilirubin. Now, another name for unconjugated is going to be indirect. Okay, so unconjugated bilirubin is also known as indirect bilirubin. It comes into the liver, and when it gets into the liver, it's going to meet this thing called UDP glucuronal uh, transferase. Okay, UDP glucuron glucuronal transferase. And so when it sees that, when it gets there, all of a sudden that bilirubin becomes conjugated. Okay, it becomes conjugated, conjugated bilirubin. It transfers its way, moves through the rest of the liver. Okay, just think of it like that. And then comes out, you know, biliary tract and then goes down here, and then it will be, as they say, reabsorbed in the intestines. Urobilinogen, ogen says to make, urobilin, or it comes over here, sterobilinogen makes sterobilin. And then that's the oh, that's essentially the stool color. All right, so that's basically the normal of how this works. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, what happens if we mess this system up? Okay, and let me say again, another name for direct is going to be conjugated bilirubin. So you have to know basically. I'd say there's you know one, two, three, four, five, six. So first of all, on the outside, you can have this thing, extravascular hemolysis, right? If there's something attached to it, you know, say there's a, a, a virus or something on there, it doesn't make it past the spleen, it gets lysed, okay? And then with extravascular hemolysis, you're going to have an increase in what? Well, it never made it to the liver yet, right? If it didn't make it to the liver, then it's going to be unconjugated. So it's an increase in unconjugated bilirubin, you know, increase... Uh, gallstones. The second and third ones are just, you make it into the liver, right? You make it into the liver, but you get low activity of this enzyme. This UDP, UDP glucuronal transferase, it should be working constantly. It should be working, you know, effectively. But when it's not working effectively, this is when stuff happens. So you can have physiological, physiologic jaundice of the newborn. And you're saying, well, what is that? That's just a decrease, okay? It's a decrease or low UDP glucuronal transferase um, activity. So what happens? Well, that means, you know, some of it does get, get to get conjugated, but, not, you know, but there's a lot that doesn't. So you have an increase in what? Increase in unconjugated bilirubin. And so, of course, this is where the newborn, they put them on the, under the lamps, and then it becomes water-soluble and um, gets passed out. Number three is Gilbert's, okay? 
gill bears. This is where, you know, they can have, the, again, yellow eyes. It's a decrease, okay, or low UDP glucuronal transferase activity. But now this one is, is accentuated when people are under stressful situations, right? The inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive, okay? And they, as they say, 3 to 7% of the population may have that. Gilbert. So now, look what we did. We said, look, if before it gets to the liver, you got to be thinking extravascular hemolysis increase in unconjugated bilirubin. It hasn't been conjugated yet. The next two, the physiological jaundice of the newborn and Gilbert's, they kind of make it to the liver, but they don't get the full, you know, the UDP glucuronal transferase isn't working like it should. Low activity, so you're going to have an increase in those, but it still kind of works, okay? Physiological jaundice of the newborn and then Gilbert's. Now, if it gets, well, I should say this. Number four is, it's called Krigler Najjar. Now that's like saying no UDP glucuronal transferase, okay? If there's no UDP, am I getting or absence of that, okay? Then you're getting massive unconjugated associated with Kernicterus. Now, number five says, okay, you've been conjugated. Now, the next step is to get out of the liver, right? There's a little transfer process in this. But if that little transfer process doesn't work, that one's called Dubin-Johnson. Okay? Dubin-Johnson, associated with the dark liver, okay, when they look at it under, under biopsy. And this is a problem with, um, how do we say, bilirubin, Transport, okay? This is a, again, problem with bilirubin transport. And then the last one, if you have some type of uh, biliary tract obstruction, okay? Now, if I have a biliary tract obstruction, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have an increase in what? Unconjugated or conjugated? Well, it's, they've already been conjugated, so it's gonna increase in conjugated bilirubin. In Dubin-Johnson, is it a, it's after they've been conjugated. So am I going to have an increase in unconjugated or conjugated? I'm going to have an increase in conjugated bilirubin because it happened after. So if you just follow the storyline and tell a story of how the bilirubin becomes conjugated through the enzyme UDP glucuronal transferase, you just start telling me where the problem occurs. Was it here? Was it here? Was it here? You know, where was the problem? And then you just put a name to it. Okay? So, um, and again, I can't stress this enough, is make sure that you understand that conjugated is AKA direct. They could, inter those are interchangeable. Don't let them kind of fool you with that. Unconjugated, AKA indirect, okay? So with this one, you also remember on your exam, uh, on your test thing, you got this thing up on the top right. So it's, it's the lab value. You can click on it, and, and you can get normal normal values, you know, for this. Now, for the total bilirubin, total normal should be between 0 0.1 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. For the direct, also known as conjugated bilirubin, the normal should be less than 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. For the indirect bilirubin, the normal should be 0 0.2 to 1.2. Now, you don't have to memorize this. You just click on the button and, and, then, you, and then you find it. AST, 14 to 35. I mean, you kind of have an idea that these are just, they look, they just look normal, they're pretty low. And then GGT, 0 to 118, okay? So these guys are normal. But it's this, if you look at this, the direct bilirubin, the total bilirubin is elevated. But that doesn't really tell us much. We gotta know what's it made of. Well, the direct bilirubin is 4.5, and normal should be less than 0.3. The indirect is 0.5, which is right where it should be. So the problem is in this conjugated, also known as direct bilirubin. So then I just go through my storyline and say, okay, the problem is it's already been, I have an elevation of conjugated bilirubin. So that could only be a couple things, right? In this storyline, it could, it could either be Dubin-Johnson, or biliary tract obstruction, at least in this little timeline. It says a liver biopsy reveals accumulation of dark 
coarsely granular melanin-like pigment in the cent cent central lobular hepatocytes, which of the following is most likely explanation of the patient's symptoms? Elevated direct bilirubin, dark on liver biopsy, you gotta be thinking Dubin-Johnson. So the diagnosis is pretty easy, Dubin-Johnson, just based on the, the bilirubin. But of course, step one's gonna say, it's not that easy, tell us the mechanism. Is it impaired transport of unconjugated bilirubin? No, you know I put that one as answer choice A, B, C if you fell for it. It's not unconjugated. Unconjugated is up here. Dubin Johnson, is, it's already been conjugated, not him. Is it low UDP glucuronal transferase activity? No, that would have been physiological jaundice of a newborn. This is not a newborn. Or Gilbert's. And of course, with Gilbert's, both of those, you'd have an increase in unconjugated, not the conjugated. Is it absence of UDP glucuronal transferase? No, you would have a skyrocketing, you know, kernicterus. Um, you wouldn't even be at this point. Um, that's actually Krigler and Najar, um, and it would have a, a massive, in, you know, obviously increase in the uh, unconjugated bilirubin. It, it wouldn't even wouldn't even be in this situation. Hepatic cirrhosis, distractor, impaired transport of conjugated bilirubin. Yeah, it's the transport issue with the with the Dubin Johnson, right there. Okay. Just make sure, again, tell the story. Tell the story and you'll be just, you'll be just fine. And then the last one here says a 25-year-old medical student is fish, finishing up her surgical rotation and has been studying for the USMLE Step 2 exam, which, has, which she has scheduled in two weeks. She has been worried about having time to prepare for her exam during this rather stressful rotation. Her mother is visiting her and notices that her, that her eyes look a little yellow. Other than the stress, she has no medical concerns or symptoms. Which of the following conditions shares the inheritance pattern that may explain the student's condition? Ah, so another two-stepper, at least. What does she have? So she's a person, she's got the yellow eyes, she's under a lot of stress. We know she's got gill bears. Now, there's no gill bears in this because they say which one has shares the same inheritance pattern. We know that gill bears, three to seven percent of the population, shares an autosomal recessive pattern, okay? Now, which one of these is autosomal recessive? And this is just strictly, go back and watch the uh, genetics videos, you don't have these memorized. We know that the myoclonic epilepsy is mitochondrial. Marfan's autosomal dominant. Rett syndrome, right, with the hands, X dominant. Neurofibromatosis, autosomal dominant. Gaucher's. Autosomal recessive. That's the connection. Okay? Now, if I, if, probably the way the step might even do this is that they have those pedigrees down here and say which of the following pedigrees is reflective of this patient's condition, and you'd have to identify which one was the autosomal recessive. But again, review those genetics videos, and I think you'll be just fine. So I hope this was helpful, guys. And again, just make sure you tell the story. Okay? Tell the story. Hope it was helpful.